Okay, I wanted to make a series of videos to supplement some of the setup guides that I posted to my PFSense blog at pfsensesetup.com. And this is going to be the first in that series of videos. And in this video, I'm going to show how to configure WAN settings using the PFSense web interface. And in order to do that, first we had to type in the IP address of the PFSense box and uh, helps if you type the right IP address here. And uh, the, we also want to type the username and password of the uh, box. So we're going to type that in and click in the login button. And we, we're at the PFSense web GUI dashboard. And we want to we want to configure the WAN settings, so we're going to use the top menu and browse to interfaces WAN, and that will bring us to the WAN settings page. And we're going to uh, enlarge this so that it's easier to see. And here's general configuration: the enable interface checkbox should be checked, otherwise it won't work obviously and when for description we can leave that as as WAN type we can have none for no type static for static IP address DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol which is normally what we would want it to be set as because under normal circumstances you're going to get your WAN IP address from your internet service providers DHCP server but we have some other types here. We also have point-to-point -point protocol, which is used by a lot of dial-up providers. So if you're on dial-up, you're probably going to use this. PPPoE, point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet, which is used by a lot of DSL providers. So if you're on DSL, you might be using this. We have two more, PPTP, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, and L2TP, layer two tunneling protocol, which are both protocols that are used by VPNs. We're not setting up a VPN right now, so we're not going to use those. We're going to leave it at DHCP for now. In fact, we're just going to leave it at DHCP. Uh, for MAC address, this is an interesting uh, option here. You can, when you, you, you probably are aware that a network interface card has, each network interface card has, has a unique MAC address. And DHCP servers, when they assign leases, they associate IP addresses with certain MAC addresses. So if you have a DHCP lease and the network card goes offline, then goes back online, the DHCP server will see that it's the same card because it checks the MAC address and it will generally assign it the same, the same IP address as it had before. Uh, sometimes you may want your ISP's DHCP server to assign a different IP address than the one that you already have. And you can do that by typing in a different MAC address in this box and thereby forcing the DHCP server to assign a different IP address. And here's MTU, Maximum Transmission Unit. Uh, you can have this is for frame size. Uh, obviously, you can put a larger number into this. If you larger frames are somewhat more efficient because there's certain overhead associated with with a frame. Uh, there's a header, for example, and l larger frames means that the the proportion of data to to overhead is is uh, is is greater. So there's more efficiency in that sense, but in addition, there there's more latency because then it it will it, you know larger frames will hog the connection for longer, so that's a, a problem. So so there's a trade-off there. So usually we leave it as the de default and then maximum segment size, which is similar principle but for TCP connections. And we're going to skip over DHCP client configuration here and and uh, private networks. Uh, generally, we want to we want to block private networks and block bogon networks. We're going to leave that checked as uh, so, so that's uh, block two, and we're going to save this, and that's the uh, WAN configuration video.